I know you're designed to guess the stuff that's trying to be said, but the stuff I'm saying is absolutely ridiculous. Your call. Mm -hmm. You can't run from it. You can't deny it. You can't pass it off. It's your call. God knew what he was doing. He knew who he was calling. And he he expertly and, and intricately detailed every aspect of your life, your being, your persona, your psyche, your physicality, everything about you from the texture of your hair to the color of your eyes to the way that you laugh to the fingerprint on your thumb. Everything is connected to your calling. And until you walk into the fullness of the thing that you were created for, you will find yourself frustrated. We got something that I feel like the Lord wants me to talk about, and it's not really a sermon, it's more of a guide to help you process uh, and understand spiritual battles in your life, whether it be from different sources um, so basically I would label this practically um, fighting spiritual battles practically fighting spiritual battles and I have six points that I want to talk about um, that I feel like are going to be super beneficial for whoever is um, whoever's going through some stuff right now um, and, and some of you may be going through things that you don't even know that are spiritual battles, um, but there actually are. Um, but you haven't dealt with the root of the issue, and it just seems like it's your problem. Um, and it's not. Um, so, number one, I want to talk to you about, like, there are things in your life that are sin, and there are temptations in your life um, that can continue to come against you. Um, and that's not okay. I know I know that it's like, well, I'm strong enough and I can deal with these things. Well, maybe you are, but maybe you're not. Maybe you're dealing with things that you shouldn't be dealing with. Maybe you're, there's extra weight on you and it's things that you shouldn't have to deal with. Um, and so I know that we, we, we're so quick to go, um, you know, all this sin and blah, blah, blah. Like, there are things that are absolute sin, and you know that they're sin. And you shouldn't be dabbling in those things. You shouldn't be entertaining um, those spirits. And there's, there's, you know, like some of you are addicted to pornography. And you've been addicted to, per, per, addicted, you've been addicted to pornography for years now. And so, uh, some of you need to realize that that's not good. That, 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 it's bad um and i think that's that's one thing and that's the first step that you need to, to make is like if you don't think something's bad for you you're not going to stop doing it um if you don't see any issue with the things that are in your life that you're constantly doing you're not going to stop doing it like it, oh it's not bad for me this isn't bad for me but i'm telling you there are things that are that's in our lives that are not that are not necessarily bad, but are leading to bad things. Um, some of it's leading to sin. And so, um, and we all know sin's not good. <laughs> we all know that uh, there are areas in our life that we need to work on. And and think about it this way. If you're filled with the Spirit of God and you're born again believer, and you are constantly being, you're being pressured by the spirit of lust to look up things that are inappropriate or you're constantly being pressed down by the spirit of fear or you find yourself stuck in anxiety 24 7 about maybe it's the way you look maybe it's the way um, that your life has panned out in the moment um, but those things are not okay and they do grieve the spirit of God because God has come to give you life and more abundantly I'm not I'm not like a prosperity preacher but I do believe that that when you start walking with the Lord, like you will find peace and you will find joy and you will find happiness and you will find the love that passes all understanding. 
because that's what God is. He He is all of the best in the world, and He can be all of the worst in the world if He wanted to be. Um, but He is the epitome of everything love, every everything loving, everything good, um, and He's inside of us for us believers. And so, number one is understanding. You have to start. You have to figure out. Okay, hey, why? Why am I okay with this? Um, this doesn't even line up with scripture, and this doesn't even line up with the way God, I believe God would want me to be. Um, some of you that are stuck with anxiety, like, are stuck in a constant state of fear, like, this isn't okay. And that's the truth. Um, but number one is you have to realize that those things are bad. And then number two is you have to find the root of the issue. Um, some of those issues could be past insecurities. It could be childhood um, life problems, things that happened when you were in your uh, in your childhood, whether that be in high school, middle school, elementary. I mean, it could be many things. I know some people are um, are, are completely traumatized by the thing, something that happened in high school where they were very embarrassed, and now they feel so insecure with their body, so insecure with themselves. Um, and it hinders them from becoming anything that God's ever called them to be because they're scared of if they get up and try to speak again that something else might happen. Um, some of you have just never felt loved. You've never been accepted by anybody. You've always been told you're not good enough. Um, and and there's so many other things that that develop a trauma or an insecurity in our life, and then that turns into patterns. And then. God's trying to call us into a new season of our life, but like every time we start trying to step out, we find ourselves stuck and then we can't move into that new season because we have not rooted out the thing that is that is constantly um, keeping us pushed down, keeping us pulled down. Um, it's it's if you never find the root of the thing that's hindering you, you'll never get away from that issue ever. So if some of you are stuck with this, like you continually have a, have an addiction to pornography, or you continually have an addiction to, uh, uh, I'm gonna say it like this: you have an addiction to 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 fear. You, it's just the normal state, and it's not normal, but that's who you are. Um, a lot of it could be from, you know. Uh, here's an example: when I was growing up, pornography was a. Um, was accessible in my home um not my whole life but some of my life and so growing up it was nothing to be able to to see things that were not appropriate for a five-year-old six-year-old seven-year-old and uh, even to my teenage years um and because of that i developed what i would call a small addiction to feeling the need to look up things inappropriate and and, and it carried over for a long time. And I would do really good. I would do so good. Um, and it would, uh, I would do good for months and months and months. And then something would come along and I would be just, you know, stuck in a place in a season where um, I was not going anywhere at the time. Or there was just something that happened and it caused me to stop moving and pressing forward. And then I would revert back to a comfort place where I was when I was a kid and I didn't realize that for a long time and then I started trying to do some self maintenance and and I found that well this brings me comfort but this isn't supposed to be bringing me comfort and that God is my comforter you know and if that's the case like I'm putting something else into the place that he's supposed to be um because of those things you know I had to um root up my past insecurities, my past comforts, um, and the addiction to those things, and the Lord will deliver you just as fast as you figure out what it is, um, and He'll help you find those things out as well. As well. Um, but if you never find the root of the issue, the reason that you're so anxious all of the time because you're stuck in a constant state of fear that you might lose something, or you know you have bills to pay and you're afraid that what if you don't what if you fail then you know everything hinges on you and that i want to tell everybody that watches this there's nothing that god can't do in this world and you aren't so important that god can't take care of your family even if you're gone that like take that weight off of your shoulders because 
Because God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And he, he will. He absolutely will. And it just takes prayer. It takes it takes a commitment. It takes, a, um, it takes just a chance for God to show up and show himself strong and, and mighty. Um, so some of you are stuck in a, in a constant state of, of fear because of what you think that you have to do. Take the pressure off of yourself and let God be God in your life. So number two is find the root of the issue. And this takes time. And it's not the same for everybody. Um, but I recommend in the... In, to take a pen and a piece of paper and to start um, taking notes about what you think could be causing you to be doing the things that you're doing. Maybe it's a constant state of temptation or it's a sin that you keep running back to, whether it's cigarettes or, or alcohol or pornography or fear or anxiety or pride, even pride. Um, why is it you feel that way? So uh, take notes and steward those things and then take those to the Lord in prayer. So uh, number three, um, this is optional if you have a good friend um, to talk to um, it helps to be able to um, open up be humble and honest um, and be open and transparent with the per one of your friends maybe it's a pastor uh, I want to say this a warning be careful be careful there are some people that will not understand the things you've been through and they don't have the capacity to receive what you're saying nor do they have the capacity to help you and to help answer some of the problems and struggles that you've been through because they've never been there and they don't know how to process it. Um, but if you could just find a friend that will just listen and pray with you and not tell the world all of your story um, and keep it to themselves, um, that's a good friend. Someone that won't blab all of your information um, and make things worse for you than what they were um, that's a good friend to have. So um, be encouraged if you have one of those. If you don't, I have a, another YouTube video coming out soon. We'll talk about how to find good friends and how to keep them. <laughs> so, um, but just make sure that the person that you're talking to has the capacity. And sometimes you're going to take a risk. Um, you you may step out and not know if they can, if they have the capacity to to handle what you're going to say. So you have to take a risk if you feel like it, you need it. If, if you don't have anybody to talk to and you feel like you need to, find you um, a counselor. Um, find you a Christian counselor or a psychologist or psychiatrist. Someone you can sit down and say, okay, here's my problems. And they'll help you get to the root, which is number two on this list of the issue. And help you, help you maneuver through that to, uh, to uproot that out of your life. Um, so if you have a friend, that's number three optional if you can have somebody to talk to it's awesome number four start making hard decisions this one's fun this one is hard um because if if your issue is anxiety what causes anxiety okay what which is most of the time stuck um they're the root of our anxiety and fear usually are best friends and so if you have fear most time you have anxiety if you have anxiety most time you have fear um, they kind of just go hand in hand. And so what is it that keeps you from living your best life? Is it that, you know, you're, you're, you have a, a weight issue? Or is it that um, there's things in your life that you don't understand and you're not where you want to be? Um, and you feel like you've missed it and feel like you're not going to go any further. Um, what is it that keeps you there? Is it because of somebody you see on social media? Is it because of the movies you watch, the TVs you watch, <laughs> the TV shows you watch? Um, is it because of the friends that you have because they're doing very well and you're not? Is it because of the music that you listen to? Um, what is it, you know? Because, I mean, there's so many things that play a factor in this world. And, then, and you have to make hard decisions now, now understanding what your problem is and understanding what the root issue is um and this is just the practical process also like i'm i'm not telling you that this is what you do every single time i'm telling you this is what you can do to help because so many times i've, I've seen so many people like they would take and they would figure out their issue and some of it's super simple like they're addicted to drugs and it's like well man why am i addicted to drugs well that's their comfort place they don't realize that they're not supposed to be that's not supposed to be their comfort and that their past life trauma, the things happened to them as a kid, it's just something comfortable for them. 
Um, and they don't realize that they need to find the root of that issue and and let the Lord begin to mend that and uproot that. And, a, and a, I don't know if I've said it already, but I, there's an analogy I use, and it's if you have a garden and you have beautiful flowers and you have veg, veg, uh, vegetation or you maybe you have, maybe you even have, you know, like um, tomatoes, uh, just whatever kind of garden you have. Like you're, you're very fruitful is what I'm trying to say. And you keep noticing that the weeds keep springing up and they keep um, blocking um, the sun from, um, from, your, from your plants. And it's, it's keeping them from getting the nutrients. That is rightfully it's. Because um, you're not trying to grow weeds, you're trying to grow fruit. And, uh, well, if you keep cutting the weeds instead of uprooting the weeds, the weeds are always going to go back if you don't uproot them. And so it requires you, and this is number three, or number two, is find the root of it. And then you have to reach down and uproot it. And, and, it, and then the same thing in, in gardening requires you to get your hands dirty. So you reach down, you find the root, you uproot it, put the soil back, and then now there's nothing taking nutrients from your fruitfulness. Um, and it's, it's allowing you the freedom to, to live the life that God's called for you. Um, but back to number four, if we live in a spiritual world where everything has a spiritual entity. Everything, let me say it like this. Um, Jesus said that, or the, the, the Bible says that God created all things for himself, everything. Um, in the beginning, um, God created the heavens and the earth. Um, he spoke everything into existence, and it says all things were made um, that were made were made by him and for him. Okay, so if Jesus, if, if God put His self in everything, if He made everything for Him, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth, because God is a spirit. Um, everything you see, every element on our periodic table has God in it. I don't know what measure, but it has God in it. Everything you see that we've created as human beings, whether it be through metals or this or that, and how we've reconstructed and, and, and applied elements to, to combine to make structures, God made those first. In the very beginning, he didn't miss a thing. He knew what we needed. He knew where we were going. And, and God made every element known to man, from the air we breathe to the other molecules in the world, uh, from, from uh, whatever it is. Every every material ever exi in existence, God made it. We knew in it, and and it has some of Him in it because He made it. Because it's for Him and for His His pleasure. Um, so having said that, social media carries spirits. I know it's internet, but people carry spirits. Uh, our friends carry spirits. Music carries a spirit. TV shows will carry spirits. How many of you have ever watched a TV show and cried? You think that's just natural human flesh being afraid or being anxious for that person on that TV show or on that movie? How many of you ever been playing a game and it, and it just gets you um, super mad and or it gets you super um, scared that you don't want to lose and blah, blah, blah. And spirits are everywhere and we live in a spiritual world and it, it just is what it is but right now number four is start making hard decisions this means that you have to recognize that everything that in this world has a spiritual portion um that will continue to affect you and you have to pay attention to that and so if you realize that every time you're on social media you feel the spirit of lust come upon you to look up things inappropriately cut out social media until you are strong enough to um, to withstand temptations and also communicate with your friends on Facebook or, or YouTube or Instagram or, or TikTok. Um, if the games that you're playing are causing you to think immoral thoughts, if the movies you're watching are causing you to be afraid, if the, I mean, TV shows are, are showing you the end of the world and now you're afraid all of the time, you're anxious that you're not going to be prepared or this or that, um, especially right now with the eclipse coming, people think that the world's going to end. So um, social media is really good about that. And if you don't have, if you don't have your mind, um, if you don't take every thought captive and um, into the obedience of God, then you're going to allow those things to continually run rampant in your life. Like your mind, you have to take those thoughts that come and go, you have to give them a place. And so not here. No, you know, um, 
And that's, that's definitely difficult when you don't know how to. Um, but you have to understand that when a thought comes that's necessarily not you, it doesn't mean that it's not you. It doesn't mean that it's you. It could be that your friend is dealing with the spirit of lust or the spirit of fear. And I'm just talking about a few things that are, and this applies to a lot of, a lot of uh, spiritual issues, is that you, ha <laughs> you have to pay attention. You have to, and, and the last uh, point in this, in this talk, I, it will make more sense on, you know, help you understand the spiritual um, signs of when things come and they aren't normal. Um, but you have to start making hard decisions, cut people out of your life, cut things out of your life. That if you noticed, you know, hey, after I was on social media for 30 minutes, I just really felt like I needed to look things up. And so cut social media out until you can handle it. Um, so on and so forth. Cut the, the music out that you listen to. Cut it out. If you feel like you just want to be prideful and arrogant and you go by, spend money because you listen to this song or this or that. I'm telling you, it all has a tie in your life. Um, and so make hard decisions. All right, number five, figure your time with God. Not the things of God. Figure your time with God. The things of God, as in going to church all of the time, make sure you're there when the doors are open, um, uh, witnessing all this stuff, being a part of any ministry. I, I know that you're like, oh, what do you mean? If you're part of the church, you know, you shouldn't have to deal with things. Uh, that stuff is work. Like, you need to be prepared before you go work for the Lord. And and people are like, well, what if I'm born again? I'm new. Like, it's different. You have to have somebody that's going to help disciple you and so on and so forth. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do things. I'm saying you should be prepared. A great example is this. is I, I, knew, a, I knew of a girl that um, she wasn't necessarily prepared to do outreach yet. She wasn't rooted and she wasn't grounded in what God had uh, had for her. And she... she met a homeless man and began to witness to him and began to do things for him in the sense of like, oh, I want to help. I want to I want to be the hands and the feet of God. And then she grew an attraction to the man and she found herself lost in fornication. And um, with a homeless person that had no job, blah, 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 the list goes on. And then the person backs it down. And I'm not saying um, that you shouldn't do stuff. I'm saying that if you're not prepared the world will eat you alive if you go and try to work for it, if you're not ready. And and when I say fill your time with God, I'm saying I've seen too many people try to fill their life with the things of God and be lost in sin. And that's the reason why churches fall apart. That's how adultery happens inside the church, um, because they're filling their time with the things of God, but not God. Um, and so that what I mean by that is prayer meditation on his word and i mean real meditation stop figure out why the scripture says what it says don't let an excuse so well, i just don't understand don't let that be an excuse because i'm telling you that if you'll pray and say lord i don't understand this i want to know i'm telling you the lord will give you understanding he'll put something in your pathway or put someone in your path or he'll give you divine revelation of what that scripture means and he'll make sure that it doesn't contradict any other word um and so um and then what I would say is meditation, and what I mean by that, it's it's a, it's another form of prayer in the sense of you sit and you process with the Lord. Um, sometimes it requires you say nothing, but what I recommend is not turning your favorite worship music on and listening to it while you process. It's turning on music just with no words, just soft piano or whatever it is, soft guitar, and just sit and meditate on the Lord, asking questions. Sometimes you talk out loud, sometimes you don't. It's just like a, it's just like prayer. But I can't tell you how many times that I've I've went and talked to the Lord and prayed, and and I've been on my face, and then when I shut my mouth and just begin to listen, um, with no words in the background to help me sing along to, no help, you know, to push me into a different place, um, and I begin to find revelation for the Lord. He would give me a scripture that would that would show me, hey, this is what you were thinking, but this is what the scripture actually says. Um, and when, it would actually um, it would actually help me process, you know, which di direction the Lord was trying to take me and how I should feel about a situation. Um, and so it just takes time. This, this process takes time. I know I've, we've only been through five steps now, and it's kind of, it's simple, but it, it's, 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 <laughs> It is a practical way to to assume responsibility for your life. 
And this is something people don't like to talk about, you know, because they're like, well, we'll just go shout and pray and we'll sing worship songs. But when you go home, you never actually found the root of what's causing you to continue to do this. But you're going back to the root of it and you're lost in sin for years. And they continue, you continually be that person that God's caused you not to be. And he's, you're asking God, why am I not going to the next season of my life? And you're like, and you're blaming on God. But God's like, I've been trying to show you, but you don't want to take the time to to look at yourself, to examine yourself and see what the actual problem is so that we can deal with that root. And I'm not a clinical psychologist, and I've said this in a lot of my videos, but I'm telling you, the way they process things helps you find the one thing that's causing you to do the thing that you shouldn't be doing and or causing you to think a way that that pattern leads you to destruction every single time. Um, and so this is a practical way to understand, because I'm telling you, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, practicality, um, you can be practical in the spirit world. When you're filled with, let me say it one time, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you can be practical in the spirit world. When you see something that's not of God, you understand. Because when you've filled your life, filled your time with prayer, you begin to know the Spirit of God. You begin to know what's right. If you read the Word, you know the truth. And the truth sets you free. Um, and when these things come against you, you have to learn to slow down and invite God into the situation and let Him show you why these things are hindering you. Because practicality in the spirit realm requires the Spirit. If you do not, if you are not filled with the Spirit of God, you will not be able to practically fight anything in the spirit realm. You have to have the, you have to be filled with the Spirit to fight in the Spirit. Okay, um, and so um, number one uh, was um, understand where the wrong things are in your life and know that they're wrong, so that you can make a change. Number two is find a, uh, the root of the issue. Number three is if you have someone to talk to, confide in them if you can. Um, remember the warning, just in case they may not be, they may be ready to tell all your business. Uh, just make sure it's someone that you can trust. I have a lot of friends that would be there for me probably if I asked them to, but you can't, I, there's no way I could tell them any of my any of my business or the things that I'm struggling with internally if I was, um, because they would um, they would tell everybody and everybody would know. Um, they don't know why they just like to talk about people. Um, <laughs> uh, number four is to start making hard decisions. Um, this one's hard. The world is a spirit world that we live in. Cut things out that you know that are keeping you from what God's called for you. Number five is fill your time with God. Not the things of God, but with God. Um, and then number six, let God be your fortress. So I realize that in this world that we live in, being practical at times will absolutely help you maneuver through life and to be stronger. But there are things that you absolutely need the help of God with. And um, Psalms 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and our very present help in trouble. Um, and that means something because like, how do I say it? Um, refuge and shelter basically is like a condition um, of being safe or sheltered from pursuit um, or in danger or in trouble. And I can't tell you, like when I first read the scripture, I was like, why would I need God to be my refuge and strength? Like, if God is for me, nothing can be against me, right? If if I'm the Spirit of God, I'm strong, man. I'm mighty. I can pull down strongholds. Like, everything's okay. I'll make it happen, right? Yeah, it sounds great. That's pride talking because <laughs> um, you need God. Like, he's stronger than any foe you ever face. And um, and it's not, it's not pride to go, I need your help, God. I can't tell how many times I've said it. Like, I don't understand. God, I need you. I need you now. I'm trying to do the best that I can. And, and I know if I put my, my best foot forward, God, you'll put all of all of you forward. Um, scripture says, if you draw now to God, he'll draw now to you. And so when you're drawing now to God and doing the things that he's called you to do, and your heart is his heart, and you're doing his will, not yours, and you're seeking him for, for him and what he can do in the earth and not for you and your ministry, it changes everything. But I'm telling you, when you need help and you say, and you've been in prayer and you understand his presence and you've been in his word and you know how what it is to, to call on the name of the Lord. I don't know if any of you have ever been been this place where you can say Jesus and he shows up in the room. Like, I, you know, it's one of those things that's like my best friend. If I were to call and say, hey, I need you, here they come, you know, and Jesus is our best friend and he will be there 
no matter what. And if there's ever a moment where you're stressed out or anxiety is, is just got a hold of you and you don't know what to do, I'm telling you, he is your best friend. And when you've cultivated time in prayer and you've cultivated time in the word, when things come against you, there are times where spirits will just bombard you and you're like, oh, I'm so afraid. I'm anxious and I got these kids to take care of and I've got this church to take care of and I've got this ministry to, that the Lord has for me and, and I just don't know what I'm going to do with my bills. And, and there's times where you're like, I just need to be, I need to be protected. I need to be surrounded. I need to be encapsulated in the presence of God so that I don't let these things drive me to make, ba to make bad decisions. And you call on the name of the Lord and here he is. And everything is in between. There's him and then on the outside is everything else. And he's like, I got you. He's your best friend. He's your present, present help. Very present help. So the scripture says in Psalms 46 and 1. And so I just really wanted to bring these six practical steps to you. And I know this isn't like the whole thing of like how things need to be dealt with. But I'm telling you, it's better than saying, put on the full armor of God. You know, it's better than just this metaphorical thing and saying, and I'm not against Ephesians talking about putting on the whole armor of God. I get it. There's practicality there. But how many times have you said, well, put on the whole armor of God? You're like, well, I don't even know what all the armor is. I can't even pick up a sword. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know what thing to start cutting at, you know? Um, and you have to find that. You have to you have to root yourself in, in the scripture. I know, but you can't really, even if you knew the scripture, what do you know what to cut out, you know? And that's the practical side of it. Like you have to sit down and go, okay, I don't understand, but I'm going to figure this out. Why I'm dealing with the spirit of lust. Why I'm dealing with the spirit of fear. I will not let these spiritual things keep me from my family, keep me from my husband, keep me from um, the ministry that God's called me to be. And I will not let these things keep me from God. So, anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, I've went through this video multiple times. Um, I've recorded this multiple times. And... It just seems like I've been bombarded with with an adverse, well, it's almost like confusion because how to approach, um, how to approach this. So it's, more, it's so effective for you guys um, because this does work for me and it's not fake. And it's me genuinely telling you that this works, you know, if I've never found the root of my issues, then I'll never be able to root, uproot it and continue to step into what God's called for me. So anyways, I'm going to drop um, all of the sub point all the points in the, in the description um below and if you enjoy this like and subscribe um and share it share it with your friends that might need this somebody that's addicted um and then help them process it if you know that they're going through stuff be a friend man sit down with them if they'll let you and let them talk to you and just i just we need each other and I, i've talked about this multiple times over this past week it's like the scripture says that um, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. And the second is like unto it. It's I love your neighbor as yourself. And I don't know anybody that would love themselves enough to think, man, if my neighbor's going through that, I wouldn't want to go through that. Um, and we need those kind of people because we need help. We're not alone in this. And we need to be together. And we need to work together. And say, yeah, it's going to cause me burdens to have to get out of my bed late at night to come be with you, to set with you and make sure that you're okay and that you don't you don't find yourself falling or walking back into temptation and, and or sin. But I'm going to be there for you. And it may take some time for you. It may take... It may take you sacrificing your own pleasures for a season to make sure somebody else, your friend, is safe and that they're, as, they're able to be as close to God as possible. So... But anyways, I love you guys. If you like this, if it's if it helps you at all, um, just consider subscribing and sharing it um, because I believe that together we can make a difference. So anyways, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.